Hi, my name is Steve Price and I'm a professional chain reaction and domino artist known as Price Machines. And today I'm going to share some of my top tips for building chain reactions or Rube Goldberg machines. I'll be giving you tips for how to come up with ideas for chain reactions, how to build the chain reactions, and how to test and make the chain reactions reliable. Before we get started, here are some examples of my work. So my first tip, obviously, is to go onto YouTube and watch some other chain reaction videos for some ideas and inspiration. If you do find a trick in someone else's project that you want to give a try, if possible, don't just copy it. Try to remix it by doing it in a new way or adding an additional step to the process. Tip number two is to explore your home for household objects that you might want to include in the chain reaction or go to a dollar store, toy store, or even a junkyard to find some interesting objects. Tip number three is to think about the object's physical properties to come up with a way that it could move in the chain reaction. Could it roll, spin, slide, bend, or bounce? And if you can't come up with a way to use the object in any of these ways, think about attaching it to a different object that could move in one of these ways. Tip number four is to build on a surface or table that gives you some height to work on so that you can use gravity to trigger a lot of the steps in the chain reaction. A domino or a weight could easily be knocked off the edge of a table to pull a string, and that string could lead to the next step by releasing a ball or pulling something that triggers the next step. Tip number five is to secure all of the objects that are not supposed to move in your chain reaction to the table or surface you're working on. So that means any ramps or supports that are not supposed to move in the chain reaction need to be secured or taped down to the table so that they don't move. This goes a really long way towards making your machine more reliable because objects don't shift slightly with each trial. To secure all the non-moving parts to the surface, I used to use a lot of hot glue but that can be pretty messy to clean up, so recently I've been using industrial strength duct tape to do this. Number six is to make sure that each step in the chain reaction has more than enough force to trigger the next step in the chain reaction. You don't want to risk having the chain reaction stop in the middle of a run just because the ball rolling down the ramp just barely didn't have enough speed to tip over the domino. So as a quick fix, just increase the slope of the ramp and make sure it really topples that over. Moving along to tip number seven. You've designed your chain reaction trick to work in a certain way and you expect it to work like that every time. But you need to think about every possible way that the pieces could move other than you've intended and put blocks or some kind of safety to prevent those from happening. Because anything that could go wrong will go wrong. Tip number eight is to design the chain reaction so it's quick to reset, and this is going to make it possible for you to test it more times with less frustration. For example, if you need to connect two different tricks that are separated by a distance, having a ball roll down a series of ramps is much better than having a long line of dominoes, because when you're resetting, you can take the ball and lift it back up to the top of the ramp instead of having to set up tons and tons of dominoes. But if you do need to use dominoes at some point, I highly recommend using the domino tape technique. That is when you're taking a small section of clear tape, putting it on the end of a domino with part of it hanging over, and putting that extra piece onto the table or surface you're building on. And that's going to create kind of a hinge for the domino and it'll make it really easy to reset it that way. Tip number nine is to think about how the tricks at the beginning of the chain reaction may affect tricks later on. So for example, if you have a heavy ball that drops down onto the table, is that vibration going to transfer through and cause something else that's set very precariously to topple early? Or if you have a ball that rolls at the beginning of the chain reaction, is that ball free to roll after it's done its intended task? Because then it could topple something else later on that you don't want it to. And my final tip for building chain reactions is to test each trick repeatedly throughout the building process. Test it on its own as well as how it works with the surrounding tricks. Fine tune or redesign every trick so that they have a 10 out of 10 success rate. 
Well, that's it. If you're building a chain reaction for fun or for a school project, I hope you found these tips really useful. And uh, make sure to check out more of my videos. I post new videos every Saturday. See you next week.